All right, good, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another episode of South African Coin Talk. Uh, I'm not sure whether I can actually start off by saying I'll bring you warm greetings from KwaZulu Natal. It's been uh, quite devastating the last week. Uh, um, the after effects of what has transpired is still lingering in the air and, and it's gonna take a long time. And I think most of you are aware of what has transpired in KwaZulu Natal. But uh, hopefully we are here to bring some light to the numismatic world and keep this hobby uh, running and sustained. Um, because you know we have a depressed coin market at the moment, but uh, we're trying our best to make sure that uh, we can do everything in our power to, to make sure we reach the South African numismatic market with some very structured talks, presentations, etc. With me today, I have, uh, sorry, before I go any further, we have to acknowledge and echo our condolences and sympathies to the father of numismatics, who is Brian Hearn, on the passing away of his beloved wife, Patricia Hearn. I've known Patricia for many, many years and um, really a, a gentle giant, a wonderful person to associate with. Uh, it, it, it is going to be a sad loss. So to Brian um, and the family, our condolences, not only for myself, from, but from the rest of the numismatic uh, community. I am privileged today to have with me Professor Michael Laidlaw, who is no stranger to South African numismatics, in fact, no stranger to, um, to world numismatics. And um, Michael has been instrumental in, in many things in South African numismatics, uh, producing some beautiful talks, uh, being the uh, past president of the Peter Maritzburg Numismatic Society, still actively involved in that society, uh, produces wonderful newsletters every month. And Michael, I've just got to really commend you and congratulate you on the excellent quality of literature you put out in your newsletter every single month. It is well received and acknowledged by many who receive it. The information that you put out there is truly wonderful and it just expands the numismatic knowledge for all those who actually come into contact with it. So well done on that. Um, before we get into our talk for today, um, which Michael would, uh, would actually do, it's more a presentation uh, rather than a talk. I'd like to just go into current affairs of what's happening in uh, South African numismatics, okay? So there's not much I can report back on, except the fact that um, I've been in contact with Dr. Morgan Carroll, and he's been actively involved. I just had a chat to him now. I gave him a call earlier on. He's in Vietnam. And um, unfortunately, he would have loved to have come onto this forum today, but he can't actually make it. The quality of his Wi-Fi is not so good where he is. But he asked me just to, uh, he, he sent me a long message here, but I'm not going to read on everything. I'm just going to give you the latest updates on, on, on where he is and, and what he is doing. So Dr. Morgan Carroll is on the verge of releasing a long awaited updated token catalog. And when I say updated, I mean, it, 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 it's really taken years to get to where they are and they're ready for printing. He's assured me that uh, COVID has slowed down uh, the printing process, but he hopes to have the book printed by the end of August. Now, the interesting thing here is, and everybody needs to take note, especially Michael, you can take it back to the other numismatic societies, okay? Uh, there's going, the information will be in color. It's going to be quite extensive and quite thick, this book, because it covers uh, a lot of tokens that have not been recorded previously. There's also going to be a, and the book will be in color, by the way. There's also going to be a crypto, cryptology adventure in the book, meaning that 
the recipient of the book can go in there now and start doing a treasure hunt, if you want to put it that way. And there is prizes uh, for that. So uh, I, I still need to get to the nitty gritty of this because not everybody belongs to a numismatic society and the, prizes, the, the prize money is directed purely to a numismatic society. So it's quite an extensive amount of money that we put aside or Morgan has put aside. It's 40,000 Rand that will be divided amongst clubs, okay? And it will be for the benefit of these numismatic societies. So there's a lot involved there. And the reward is in solving the cryptic puzzle. So once we get more clarity around this, whether it's going to be a group effort, a club effort, et cetera, uh, we'll pass that on to you. Okay. So we hope that the token book will be here. Uh, Dr. Morgan Carroll has assured me that there is no profit from this book. Even if we have to try and give the book away for free, we must look at it. But obviously, we need to take into consideration uh, postage costs and getting the books here. So there might be a small cost to it. And there will be distribution points for this book. Okay. The other, the other point of issue is that he is also in the process of getting his new coin catalog in place. And um, in the air, there's, there's various initi in initiatives that's taking place. And um, the next formal meeting that we do have, we will probably get Dr. Carroll onto the forum to elaborate more, but uh, he's, is also creating spaces for pedigrees, errors, um, et cetera. And, most, and, and he wants to include Sangs as a grading company with pricing in the latest catalog. So that will be interesting, but we'll pass on more to you. His closing statements as well uh, in this uh, WhatsApp message to me is that condolences on the, the many numismatic collectors who have passed away since the outbreak of COVID and that of the passing of uh, Brian and his wife. So that is the latest in terms of what I have uh, from Dr. Morgan Carroll. In the numismatic world, there's not much happening. COVID has actually slowed down everything tremendously. Um, it's affected um, numismatic meetings in the sense that uh, the curfew has actually now stopped it and also uh, aside from the curfew, it's, it's limited the number of people that can attend gatherings. So we just got to adhere to that. This, this virus is, is deadly. It, it is killing a lot of people. We've got to maintain social distancing. We've got to sanitize and we've just got to be safe. It's, uh, I know of a lot of people that are in hospital and uh, are not making it. Michael, I'm going to, under current affairs, uh, turn to you to give us some of the latest happenings uh, from a Peter Maritzburg side. Yes, um, hello, Anthony, and hello, everybody who's listening in. You just want um, to take the mic closer to you? That's right. I'll say that again. Hello, Anthony, and, and, and thank you for the, in, the, the introduction. Um, and hello, everybody who's listening in. Um, Anthony said that I should give you an update of what's going on in Hilton. And it's actually marvelous. The, 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 the unity and the camaraderie and across colors is really remarkable. I mean, it, it's, it's a real tribute to the nature of South Africa that the country seems to have found um, unity in, in, in adversity. Um, it, it, it's, 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 it's really heart, heart lifting. Um, um, there's not much news numismatically because the club hasn't met, but I'll get to that when I, when I get to my talk, I'll, I'll talk a bit about the club. Anthony, back to you. Thank you, Michael, for that update. The other thing from a South African numismatic point of view, there's a wonderful booklet that has been produced by uh, Pierre Norki. It is the Menace Single Shaft Paul Kruger Half Pond of 1892. Now, I can assure you that this book is 
limited to probably only uh, booklet is limited to probably only 50 copies. He has sent a copy to Michael uh, for the Peter Maritzburg Society, I believe. And it's 40 pages of, um, it's a well-written, it's a well-written booklet. So if anybody can get a copy of this booklet, I would suggest you get it. The, the Mena Half Pond is well known. It's, it's, and it's well worth the read. Uh, and to Pierre, well done. I mean, it's, it's excellent. Pierre has produced quite a number of papers and he's given a talk to us as well. Uh, so well done to Peter Pierre on the uh, production of this booklet. The other item under current affairs that I just want to show briefly is something that I've come into, okay? And it is basically a Johannesburg Municipal Tramway Native Pass. It actually came in two varieties. This is the triangular variety, and this is the circular variety. Now, now there's absolutely, absolutely no information about them. There is mention of native trams, etc., being used from the early 1900s. It is well documented, but I do not see any information about um, these, these passes. So once we do find any information, we will let you know. And that is another find for South African numismatics. So Michael, I'm not going to take up too much time on this on this Saturday afternoon, and we hope everybody is is was going going to listen to this talk, will enjoy this presentation, and 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 learn from the valuable information that you are going to part onto them. So Michael, without further before I go before I hand over to Michael, I just want to say that Michael has been instrumental in the wonderful website called. SouthAfricanMedals.com. Now, I'm not sure if many of you have seen that website, but please, I would implore you, go and visit the website and see the amount of work and research that Michael has done to preserving the information of, I call it, the lost medallions. Medallions that are of South African nature that's recorded in this website. Michael, I'm not sure if you're going to cover this uh, in your talk, but do you want to just give us a brief of how that website came along or is it part of your talk? Well, I can say how I got started. Um, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's it's a, a, a tale of poverty, Anthony. Um, I, 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 I first of all started to collect South African coins and realized that if I was going to compete with the likes of, well, I won't name names, but the, 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 the wealthy collectors in South Africa, I would not stand a chance. So I decided to branch into something that was um, easier and less, <clears throat> less um, damaging on my pocket and uh, picked on, on commemorative medals. In fact, I, I got started in commemorative medals because I'm Scottish, and I originally, uh, some time back, collected Scottish commemorative medals, particularly the, the 1745 Rebellion medals, um, which Scotland lost against England, as they do with rugby and everything else. Um, uh, so I decided to, to settle on South African commemorative medals, and and rapidly realized that there were so many of them that that I would never actually summit the mountain of of, of the subject and and also I realized that that I wouldn't have enough money to actually have the collection all in one place in my house so I decided that rather than than than, than collect the medals I would collect the story about the medals. So I took photographs of the medals I had, and I took photographs, well, I obtained photographs rather from friends like Anthony and, and Reginald and, and Kubis Bosman, for example, been a big help. Um, and stick them on, on, a, on, a, on a PDF file. But then I realized, well, 
a PDF file nobody else can see except me and whoever I send it to. So I decided to, to purchase a website and the websites are very cheap, you know, it's not a really, very onerous cost running a website. And that's how it started. And I've just gone on from there. It's been an enormous pleasure for me. And it's been, and for, for, for the elderly, numismatics is just fantastic. You know, you keep busy doing something which you think is of interest to other people. And that gives you some worthwhile, it makes you feel worthwhile in your dotage. You know, and that's that's quite important, you know, to still feel that that age 76, you're still worth something. Um, anyway, back to you, Anthony. <laughs> Michael, um, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but uh, a lot of auction houses are quoting you as a reference in the catalogs. Yes, I've seen that. It's very pleasing. You know, uh, lots of things are happening to me these days that, that, that show that my life has not been completely a worthless effort. Um, so, <laughs> yes, it's very nice to see that that's happening. And, you know, the, the, the number of people from overseas who have, who use my website and comment on it and improve it is marvelous. I mean, it, it really is lovely to have some kind of a, an international community interested in South African medallions. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. And uh, when was this actually born, Michael? When did it start? Well, really when I retired, because I had to figure out something to do with my, with my idle hours. And in fact, actually, even before I retired, because I was already anticipating having idle hours. So about 2000, I started. Michael, are you funding this yourself? Are you? Uh, yes, yes, I, 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 I fund it myself. You know, I buy medallions. And then I hope to sell them at a profit, which sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. Um, you know, it's, a, it's, it's probably a break even effort. I don't think I'm losing any money. I don't think I'm making any money. The website is cheap. Um, you know, it, it, it doesn't really matter. I'm not really money oriented so long as it's not a lot of money. Like I've just lost 8,000 rand um, because the Durban warehouse of the courier guy was looted. Um, and there was, a, there was a couple of nice medallions in there. That's, that's really more of what I'm disappointed about than the loss well, of money. You're getting, me, you're getting me worried because I had a parcel posted to me last week, Thursday, and I haven't received it. Ah, well, if, it's, if you go to the tracking and you see it's at Durban Warehouse, you're in, not in, in a good place, Anthony, or rather your package oh, is not in a good place. Okay, I won't be depressed. Uh, let's let's continue. Um, yeah, Michael, thank you very much. Michael, you've also been a recipient of a uh, merit award for your good works as well. Yes, um, I received it at the same time as Pierre received his. We were sort of joint recipients of, well, we, we didn't receive it jointly. We received it together. He received one, I received another. Uh, around about... Five 2016. Years ago. Thank you. 2016. Yes. Yeah, I was up there with you in uh, Benoni uh, at that dinner. Yes, a nice Italian restaurant which, which had dubious Italian food, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you, Michael, for that uh, brief history of how you got into uh, producing this website or, or getting this website off the ground and a history behind it. I can tell you that it is. Uh, it probably you thought it was a small venture, but it's taken off and exploded into something great. And and the amount of people that actually utilize that in in this day and uh, today is tremendous. I mean, uh, everyone actually quotes you when selling items on Bob on any other platform. So those people that um, have got medallions, I suggest you go on to. Uh, Michael Laidlow's website. The search facility is fantastic. You can search by date, you can search by certain criteria, um, and you will find your medallions. Michael, without further ado, I'm not going to steal your thunder. This is your uh, presentation. Uh, thank you very much for accepting my invitation to, to do this uh, talk, and hopefully it's not going to be the last one. So, uh, Michael, it's over to you. Uh, the, the podium is yours. Okay, thank you, Anthony. I'm going to share my screen now. If I can find the green button somewhere, there we are. 
got it. And then what do I do next? Make this go away. Okay, the, I'm going to start my talk properly now. Um, the I, I thought to begin with, what I would do is I would skim through um, the references that I use for the website. Um, now, this 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 is probably Michael, the, if you're sharing if you're sharing anything, we can't see it, eh? Oh, that's a pity. Let me try again. Right, I've got back to myself now. Can you see me, Anthony? Yeah, I can see you clearly. Right, I can say share screen. Can you see my screen now? Nothing's coming out. Um, that's very odd. Because I'm pressed the share screen button. Just know. Okay, there we go. We can see your screen. You can proceed, Michael. <clears throat> right, let me start this um, introduction again. What I'm going to go through is a sequence of slides showing the references that I, I use to build the website. The, 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 the most um, comprehensive um, description of Medals of the ZAR um, was written by um, Anna Smith in 1958. So it goes back a long way. The contents of the of the um, of, of the of the of the of her book is essentially a museum catalog of all the medals held by the um, Africana Museum pertaining to the ZAR. She subsequently in 1978 wrote a second book on this one here, Commemorative Medals of, the, of South African Interest, which is basically all the medals in the museum that, that were relevant to the, um, the um, history of South Africa up until about 1976, 77. What's tragic here is that the, the Africana Museum, this, this um, is, is now, it, it's impossible for me to get access to the information in the Af Africana Museum, uh, or rather the holdings of the Africana Museum. It, and if anybody can help me to do that, I'd really appreciate it. Me. Anna Smith also wrote a book called Africana Curiosities, which is very interesting in itself, and it has a number of medals, not in either of her other two references, like this very extraordinary one with, with a lady with, a, with a, an ostrich um, headdress holding some lobster. I have no idea what that's about at all. Um, <clears throat> another well-known Author is Matty Oosterhuizen. Oops, sorry. No, oh, man. There we go. Um, and, and she has written um, a book um, about the medals relating to uh, President Kruger. Um, these medals are or were, I don't know if they still are, in the National Cultural History and Open Museum in Pretoria. 
Um, she also wrote a booklet called The Era of the Generals, which also had um, medals in it. This is probably the most beautiful of all the, the um, books concerning South African medals. These ones are the Boer War tribute medals. Um, the, the photographs in it and the descriptions in it are really wonderful. They, 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 it's a beautiful publication. Um, unfortunately, he's called it the definitive work. And that's the, one of the troubles with books and one of the advantages of websites is that you can't really say definitive when you're writing a book because it, 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 the, the, the subject is never ending. With a website, of course, it's open-ended. But this is a wonderful book, really is wonderful. Um, this is incidentally covers a few um, uh, commemorative medals. And it's a very nice book by itself, um, and well worth having a look at. Um, Good old Becklake had a chapter on um, commemorative medals. And of course, Brian Hearn, um, and I echo um, Anthony's tribute to his wife. Uh, Anthony, uh, uh, Brian has written a lovely um, catalog of medals of the Anglo-Boer War and basically replicating what was done by Anna Smith in the 1950s, but now with color photographs. What's missing, of course, is the descriptions and the, the, the background to the medals, but, but Brian does give um, prices, which is very handy for collectors. Then moving on to information about overseas medals, because many overseas medals are relevant to South Africa. This is a gigantic opus um, written by Lawrence Brown in three large volumes called British Historical Medals. Um, it's a, it really is an opus magnus. Um, also, um, a chap called Emer has written a, a, a catalog. This one has got prices and it extends quite far back in time. This, this, this You can barely make it out. I can read it from here, 1588. Um, that would be during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. Um, so it goes back quite a way. Um, and, and another one is, is, is a spink catalog produced by Daniel Firon. Again, it's got prices in it. Um, I can't resist putting in um, Kruger Pond invitations because I'm very fond of these things. Um, they're not strictly medallions, um, but they are on my website. The author was Paul Withers. Um, Many of you will know the medal yearbook. There are a few medals in there, which are really commemorative medals, mainly Zulu medals, the Zulu um, Victoria Jubilee medal, the Zulu Edward VII coronation medal, and the Zulu, or not necessarily the Zulu, the, 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 <coughs> the, the Chiefs medal for the royal visit in 1947. Um, going further afield, in fact, you can't go much further afield than New Zealand. This one is a bit closer to Australia. Um, Carlisle has written um, a book about Australian medals, and there are naturally references to the Australian medals relative to the Boer War. And similarly, Morel, Mor Moron, Morel, beg his pardon, um, has done a similar thing for New Zealand. The last one and the oldest one is from um, the Netherlands. Um, to translate this for you, this says um, Journal of the Royal Netherlands um, <clears throat> Society. And then here, this is, well, you African speakers know what that is. That's coin and metal study. Um, they put this, this publication out every year. I don't know if they're still doing it, but this was the eighth edition in 1990. 
Um, it contains, because the Netherlands produced many medals that relate to the Boer War, it contains a complete description of all the medals that the Netherlands produced for the Boer War. Unfortunately, I can't read it because it's in Dutch. Um, it's even in Latin. Um, gosh, um, incomprehensible. Um, so I'm now going to launch into my website. And um, this is a mock-up. It's got nothing to do with, with what you see and when you go to the website. Um, um, I just picked these two medals out um, being what I consider the most internationally uh, known and respected um, South Africans. I should have put Mandela down here, um, but I, I didn't do it. Um, it, it. It has got a link. If, if you, Anthony may send this to you, this, this document, that I'm, this, this slide document that I've got, it has a link to it, so I can just click on the link. And the website that I'm going to describe to you now is www.southafricanmedals.com. And I'm just going to enlarge the screen for a start. There. When you go, when you enter the website, you see a list of, of medals. There's a, there's a list of the medals. You have been taken to any old page in the, in the website and you see a list of the medals there in alphabetical order. They also have a catalog number. That's that number there. That is absolutely irrelevant unless you want to specify a particular medal. Most catalogs, these numbers have some kind of sequential information. They have no sequential information at all to the reader. The, the, the only significance for me is it's the order in which I stuck them onto the website. Um, you can then see the year of the medal and who created it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the search facility and I'm going to go to a particular, a particular search um, I'm going to search for all medals dated 1967. Search. <clears throat> now what you see down here are all the medals that are on the website dated 1967. Most of them are Rhodesian, as you see, they are all Rhodesian medals. Um, and that's because it was two years after independence from Great Britain in 1965. So the Rhodesia was all gung-ho about um, advertising the fact that it was a, a now an independent country. Um, but right at the bottom here is the one I want to talk about. Um, just to illustrate what you can find on the, on the website, rather than to cover the whole blooming lot. Um, so here you have, if you, if you hover over the title, the title changes color. See that? It changes from, it goes to orange. Um, and, and also you can click on the, on the actual images. So I'm going to click on the title and then show you what it looks like, the description of this particular medal. So there you see this particular medal. It is in gold, it is in silver, it is in bronze. It is commemorating the third South African Numismatic Convention in Durban. It was issued by the Natal Numismatic Society. There it is in English and around the bottom is in Afrikaans. And the date was 1967. Um, the, the, the details of the medallions now follow. For a start, if it, it says it's circular, which it is, sometimes they're square, sometimes they're, they're funny shapes, um, sometimes they're ovals. Um, there's the, the, the person who, who um, the medalist who, who, who 
designed it and made it. There's a year. These are the two references to it. First of all, it, it appears in Anna Smith's book. That's what that means. And there's a, there's a the medal reference number and there's mime reference number. Then it describes the, the, the makeup of the metal, the size, con the, the, the metal content, the mass, and my estimate of value. Um, I might just say about values, largely they're thumb sucks. I mean, I do, I do look at what they sell for on the internet and, and auction sites, but it keeps changing. One of the problems is that the metals are actually all scarce. If you consider coins as a as a as a measure, um, metals are are, are are all scarce. There's, there's there's not much demand for a particular metal. I mean, I don't know what the mintage of this would be, but of the order of maybe a thousand, maybe this one here, maybe of the order of ten or twenty. Um, so you don't really see them up on auction that much. Um, so it's difficult to get a, a value of the price of them in the, in the marketplace. Um, then carrying on further down here, there's a description of the edge. It's plain in this case. Sometimes it's got writing on it like the, the um, hallmarks or something like that, and have a silver or gold medal. Then there's a description of the obverse, a description of the reverse, um, and then some notes that I've just added about the nature of the metal, what the occasion was. Um, in this particular says, the case, it just tells you that the gold metal came in a blue fitted case. Um, so that's what you can that's what you can see in the general description of a particular metal. If you want to see what it looks like larger, you just click on any one of these images, and then you will see an enlarged version of that, of that, um, of that um, medal. It's a lovely medal, isn't it? Um, the, 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 this is the emblem of the of Natal, galloping wildebeests, um, and hills behind. Um, also, the emblem still of the. Natal Numismatic Society. Um, I just click on another one here, this one here, just to show you the silver reverse. Um, this one here, you see, is stamped with the with the silver, and there's Willie's neighbor's um, initials to show that he was the one person that made it. Okay, so that will give you an idea of, um, of how you, the information you, you can find about each medal. Um, I'm now going to um, show you this one here. I'm going to go to about this site. Um, there's a picture of me for a start. Um, this website is a work in progress. Um, it's, it's still a work in progress. It's been progressing for about 20 years. And when completed, it will document more than a, a thousand commemorative medals. Actually, it's now up to more like 1,300 or a bit more than that. Um, and search features, blah, blah, will help you, help you find a medal. Uh, that's who I am. I'm Scottish and lived in South Africa for 77. And there's my email address. If you want to contact me, you can get, get, use that email. Um, what I want to point out is this is this is not a commercial website. Um, it, it, it's it's uh, there's no copyright on any of the information in there. You can go in there, you can take what you want and use it how you want. I don't care. Um, it's 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 entirely free. Um, the medals are not for sale, however. But what I would like is if any of you who've got medals um, that they would like to um, have on this website, please, will you do this? Take a nice picture of both sides, measure the diameter, tell me what the metal's made of and um, its, its weight. That would, that would be a great help to me to, 
further increase the value of the, of the website. Notice I am a fellow of the Peter Maritz Numismatic Society. I was recently made a fellow after I ceased being the chairman. Thank you to the members for electing me to that position. Um, and I'll speak more about the Numismatic Society later. Um, so I've just pressed home again, and you now get on to another page, randomly selected listing medals in, in alphabetical order. Um, there's, there's just a host of medals in there. It's, it's quite extraordinary how many medals are real. This, this one here is, is, is about the, 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 the the, the armored train disaster. Um, uh, just, I'm just clicking it at random, just to, just to show you what it is. On the morning of 15th of November, 1899, an armored train carrying British troops under the can command of blah, 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 um, and so on. You, you can see it's, it, it's, just a, just a, it's just a simple little medal. It's got a, got a, uh, a Kruber sixpence probably. Um, and a Victoria sixpence on the other side in a, in a little cheap metal frame. Um, anyway, I'm just digressing there. Um, the, the search facility now, I want to look at that. Um, for example, um, let's just, just type in something here. Um, what will we type in? We might as well do another numismatic society. That probably will get something. And there we have um, medals relating to the Transvaal Numismatic Society. This probably is less well known. Um, not very nice metal. Let's not do that one. Well, let's let, let's let's do this one here, which is a pretty metal, um, Burgers Pont. Um, also, uh, gold, silver, and bronze. Um, this is the emblem of the. Transvaal Numismatic Society. Now they have upgraded their name in a vain kind of way to be called the National Numismatic Society, but it's a still, still the same outfit. Um, um, notice that all these medals that are, that are nice related to South African numismatics are in the 1960s, 1970s. The, the, that was the heyday of, of, of numismatic societies in the country. So um, I'm going to leave it at that. I think I've covered everything that I want to cover. Um, the, the search facility is really very good. Um, you can search for um, anything. Uh, and you, you, if there's a medal there, you'll find it. Um, I'm now going to get back to um, the normal view. Um, and I'm going to close that off. So it, that was all obtained from this, um, this composite slide here. And now I'm going to move on to the next slide, which I'm going to talk a little bit about the Peter Maritzburg Numismatic Society, better known as the Maritzburg Coin Club. Um, you see that we've got we've got two emblems for our society. This is the one we currently use, um, but extraordinarily, this one was discovered um, just a few months ago. It's it's the first emblem of our society. Um, um, 
But what I want to show you is what we store on Google Drive, which is our basically our library of 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 um of well, I'll show it to you. And let's, let's let's just show you what's on there. Um, there are it, it 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 it's like your like your computer um, filing system. Uh, this is a this is a folder for books. And this is a folder for our newsletters and any other stuff we stick in there. Um, let's have a look at the books. Double click on it to get it going. Um, there's a whole bunch of 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 books in our library. Um, this this is this is interesting to those who collect military medals. It's the Anglo-Boer War Medal Roll. Um, a couple of of um, journals that used to be made by the um, Association of South African Numismatic Societies. Here's a book which is I don't know if it's legit, but I've scanned this book in Rhodesian coins. Um, there's the Kruger Pont imitations book. I actually wrote myself a little booklet um, that is a companion to this one. Um, um, extracts from the paper currency of the Anglo Boer War. Um, a, a member of our society, um, um, Milner Snell, um, has written two token books um, re relating to the the, the tokens of Natal and the tokens of Transkei, and also uh, an older book in tokens of Natal written by Pat Moran, and other stuff. Um, you you can you can look at that if you have an inclination to do so. Um, the newsletters here are Michael. Before you go on to the newsletters, are those books downloadable? Oh yes. Um, I'll just I'll just show you what I'll just open one just to give you an idea of what it is. Um, let's um, let's do a simple one. Oh, this this, this is this is a commemorative medals of the ZAR. Let me just double click on it. Double click. There it is. There you can scroll down and then you, you see what's written. It's all type written, and then you click on it. And you now just a minute. So let me go back. Um, how do I do that? <clears throat> Just a minute, let me, oh, there we are. Um, you can click on it there and you can say download. You see that, Anthony? Download. Are you there, Anthony? 100%. Yes, I can see that. Right. Now, okay. I, I, know you, I know you can download it. I just wanted you to make the audience aware of it. Right. Okay. So you can you can you, you you can press download. You can also report abuse. Um, like for instance, if you want to click on here and report abuse, you can say copyright infringement. Please don't, but you could if you wanted to. Um, um, I go down to the newsletters. The newsletters have been running since 2016, so there's there's at least 10 newsletters in each year. Um, I'll go to the most recent year and the most recent newsletter, so as you can see what it sort of looks like. Uh, Maritzburg Coin Club, you've got the link here to the to Google Drive, incidentally. Um, here's the lockdown symbol, we're all locked down, no meeting took place. Um, this, is, this is Morgan and Carol. Um, and he gave um, two uh, talks um, to the International Token Web Conference recently, one on Larkin tokens and one on the Gritquid Town coinage. Um, here is an informal get together we had instead of a meeting um, at uh, Chrissy's house. There's Chris there. Um, there's Carl, you know, everybody will know Carl, there's Vimpy, there's me, probably a bit worse for drink because I seem to remember reciting some lines from On the Good Ship Venus, which I wouldn't normally have done 
um, if I hadn't had a few beers. Um, there's a report on the, the newly discovered um, emblem of the society. Um, somebody shared uh, um, uh, Larkin tokens. These ones were ones dug up from the, the um, long drop toilet um, by Scott Balsam. Um, this was a, a medal to commemorate the, the visit of, of um, King Edward, later King Edward VIII, to Timberland. Um, this one here is a, is a lovely example of a Victorian um, colored enameled coin. Then there's a collection of two medals which relate to Kruger's visit to the Paris exhibition in 1900. There is the pavilion that the ZAR had that, uh, that, um, that um, exhibition. Uh, remember the French were, were very much in support of Kruger. Um, and so there's a, there's a, there's a, I would imagine that there was a fair bit of encouragement and um, finance available to the ZAR to establish that pavilion. Um, one of the very, very rare exhibits of that museum was this medallion here, um, which um, was um, the, the, the creators of this medallion had assembled a whole bunch of stuff from their own personal belongings relating to the ZAR and then commissioned this medal. Um, um, and it's a museum piece. It really is a, a remarkable piece that. Um, and lastly, there's a, there's a Rhodesian um, meritorious conduct medal. Um, only 93 of these were made. There's 37 to members of the British South African police. This one was to the British South African police. And extraordinarily and ironically awarded in a huge rush right at the very end of Rhodesia, five days before the country became a crown colony again in anticipation of it, mad mugs taking over. Um, I think that's everything, Anthony. Um, let me just... Is that the end, Michael? Yep, that's the end of it. Um, if you've got any questions, Anthony, that you want to, that I've uh, omitted to say something that I should have done, um, maybe now. No, um, I mean, uh, just a, a, fa a, fan a, fa a fantastic walkthrough um, for your website so that the people can actually see and know what's happening. So well done. And <clears throat> I think only when they go into the website, they will understand um, how much of work is actually involved in putting that together. And like you said, guys, if you have a, a medallion or a medal and you've searched Michael's website and you haven't found it, uh, please don't leave it there. Make sure that information gets through to Michael so it is documented and recorded. That is the purpose of this website, is to document everything for the future generations to come and information on M. I mean, I would hate to think currently if this website was not functioning, what people would do uh, when they found a medallion in their hand and they didn't have the information. So kudos to you, uh, Michael, well done. And congratulations, um, a <coughs> very well-designed website, easy to navigate and um, excellent quality pictures as well in there. So the information is, 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 is of high quality. So once again, thank you very much. Yes, well, thank you, Henry, for the opportunity to, to show off my wares, as it were. Um, Sorry, just I get the mic closer to you. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Anthony, um, and thank you for the opportunity to show off my wares, as it were. Um, it's been a pleasure. Michael, what are your plans to have this uh, continuing and, and sustained for future? Well, uh, that, you know, um, you're talking presumably after I slip the mortal coil. How is it going to be? <laughs> no, touch, touch <laughs> with it. <laughs> well, it, 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 I, 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 I'm, 
in front of you in the queue um, right now. So I really have to think about what's going to happen um, to keep the website going uh, in perpetuity. Um, I haven't yet thought that through. Um, but um, um, maybe you've got some ideas you can help me with that. Um, um, Michael, if, uh, the, the, if there's any literature or anything that you want me to pass on to the guys, uh, let me know and um, I can send it through to, to everyone. Yeah, I think I sent you the, 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 the PDF file of the yeah. slides, did I not? Just pass that on because, because um, they, can, they, can, they can see the reference books, they can get immediate access to the, the, the website and also get immediate access to the Peter Maritzburg Coin Club um, um, Google Drive library. Excellent. Um, thank you, Michael, for coming on to the show today. It really was a, um, a pleasure having you on, and I hope to see you more in the future. Uh, maybe you can do a talk on some of the medallions its, itself, uh, Kruger, Kruger medallions. So. Uh, yeah. Yes, I, 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 that that will be that will be a worthwhile um, exercise. Also, uh, these little these little um, imitation ponder that you like. Um, I would I would I would prefer you have, doing that if you can. That would be great. I mean, it's really nothing. I mean, it, it, but it's such a cute little bit of numismatics so that that it, that, that and, and anybody can do it. Anybody can collect them because they're not really very expensive. It's, it's a yeah. lovely. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Michael. Um, once again, um, let me know when you're ready, and I'll and I'll hook you back onto the channel, and we can get that broadcast going as well. All right, everybody, we've come to the end of the show. Thank you for for listening and uh, spending this time with us. Um, and while if you have been affected by this this writing and looting, uh, I just pray that you are safe. That's the most important thing. Uh, just keep your family safe. I know a lot of people are running around uh, panic buying. Uh, please don't. I see a lot of trucks so with, uh, with supplies coming in. Uh, they might not be as what you are used to, but you will have food, that's for sure. Uh, fuel is running out as well, so make sure that uh, uh, you only go out if necessary. No uh, splurging runs, but uh, do take care out there. Michael, is there any last words from you? No, just to your own. Thank everybody for watching and okay. listening. So thank you once again, guys, and uh, it's goodbye. We'll see you at the next South African Coin uh, Coin Talk show. Have a wonderful, wonderful uh, Saturday weekend and week ahead. Thank you. Bye bye.